Let's move on to 4A, where we actually have two local teams squaring off. And, man, Angola was really put through the ringer. Man, they answered yeah. the bell, no <laughs> doubt about it. What you say it. about them right now? I, we, uh, speaking to John Harrells, I mean, uh, our, our man Ross Kinsey, former Angola Hornet himself. He was asked, excited. Yeah, he it. was like, when is the last time a team has gone on in sectionals to win back-to-back -back overtime games on the road in the postseason? Harrell said, I haven't had it, seen it happen in the last 24 years. That's how yeah. far his, his records go back. So pretty rare territory in the first sectional championship since 92 for Angola. It doesn't get easy this week, though. No, it doesn't. They're hosting Bishop Dwenger in what will be the highlight zone game of the week. How do you see this one playing out, and, and what are really what's really this game going to come down to? Well, we talked about Snyder not seeing a team like Carmel all year. And, and obviously, Bishop Dwenger is not a dominant Bishop Dwenger team, but I still think it's a much better team than most of the teams that Homestead, or excuse me, Angola has seen all year, maybe including a Northwood and a Culver. So that's the big question. Is it just another big challenge for Angola? Can they rise up? Can they meet the challenge? They have, ever, I mean, throughout this season and the regular and the postseason, I just don't know if you can fall behind Bishop Dwenger. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know a lot about Culver. I don't know about Northwood, but... I don't know if you can fall behind two touchdowns and come back on DeWanger. I just don't see that as a possibility. So Angola needs to come out and play well from the opening uh, opening kickoff. I mean, they've kind of fallen back and then have to storm back the last couple of weeks. I don't think you could do that against the Saints. One of the things we've been talking about all season is, is who exactly fills what role in the Bishop Dwenger offense. It seems like guys are starting to figure out exactly what is going to be asked of them. Patrick O'Keefe now appears to have a stranglehold on that quarterback position. Chip Clark had another big game, uh, had the big touchdown against New Haven, but another you know, 21 carry, 93-yard game last week. It seems like guys have found their role, and they are you know, running behind the big Tipman guy. I mean, like they have things a little bit more figured out and a little more calmly uh, – put together, I guess you could say, on the offensive side of the football for the Saints. Yeah, you thought when Jordan Hudson went out at running back, who was going to carry the load at running back? And Chip, Chip Clark has been tremendous in coming in and really been the, the, the bell cow offensively on the ground, being able to, to carry the ball 20, 25 times a game, really taking the load off the quarterback position. And seeing, you've seen a lot of a musical chairs there. But when you can run the ball the way they've been able to with Chip Clark and all that stuff, I, I think it's really helped out. And that defense... It's, it's been very good, and that's, they've, they've kind of zoned in. The first half of the year, I think, was a lot of feeling out because they had a lot of new guys and a lot of new spots really settled in playing great defense right now. I feel like one of the, the themes this year was that a lot of the SAC teams were more one-dimensional than sure. we've seen in the past. There was either a run-first team or a pass-first team. There wasn't a lot of uh, teams with a lot of complete offenses with, with the balance of the running game and the passing game. Angola is another team that – has balance offensively. you got Chance Roddy, who doesn't make a lot of mistakes at the quarterback position. Right. Very solid, has seen a lot of snaps. He's got Joel McCurdy. He's got Sean Miller. He's got Chase Schneff. I mean, he has guys in the run game, in the pass game, that have made big plays in clutch times, especially in the past couple of weeks. Yeah, and it seems like every time they need those guys to step up and make a play, they do. Coming down to the kicker last week in Eric Cockcroft, na nailing the, the tying field goal close to the end of regulation, hitting the extra point in the, in the overtime to get them uh, – pushed over the edge, but blocking the kick at the end of regulation to mm -hmm. prevent the win. They missed the extra point Culver does in, in overtime. I mean, but the, between guys stepping up and the stars aligning, it's just, it's just been phenomenal for Angola. And you feel right when you feel, okay, this is the week it ends, they advance and play another week. And now another week we're looking at it going, mm, maybe it ends this week, but how can you doubt Angola at this point?